Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. Delayed the emergence. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. Do we have? Seven days. Welcome back, everyone. Thanos was right. This is going to be my Eternals video all about how Thanos saved the Avengers and half the planet from the Celestial Host. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here in the brand new footage that they released, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. Later this week, my Eternals post credit scene video, as well as my full movie Easter eggs breakdown videos, will start posting. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, be sure to go see it when you have the opportunity. This video will only contain things that I've talked about in my previous Eternals trailer videos. So if you've seen the trailers for the movie, then this won't contain any big spoilers that you don't already know about. But during this new Marvel Eternals trailer, the longer scene that they released, in the beginning of the movie when Richard Madden's Icarus and Salma Hayek's Ajax character are meeting again for the first time in thousands of years, just chatting it up on the events of Avengers Endgame Thanos, the snap and the blip, Ajak mentions that she's been contacted by Ayrsham the Judge, the Prime Celestial. He's the leader of the entire Celestial host, that giant red one that you see in all the trailers. The members of the Celestial's race that band together in a team call themselves the Celestial host. That's why we call Ego the Living Planet a rogue Celestial, because he was a Celestial just like them, just as powerful, but he didn't become part of the Celestial host. So in this conversation that they're having, she's telling Icarus that the Celestials have seen that the emergence has been jump-started by the Hulk's Infinity Gauntlet snap during Avengers Endgame. And as I've talked about in my previous videos, the emergence is the event that describes the emergence of a totally new Celestial that's been growing inside planet Earth for millions of years, feeding on the low-level cosmic energy given off by humans. It's a very Matrix-like explainer for the Marvel Universe. Humans as batteries, but make it Marvel. I talk about how this is sort of connected to WandaVision and the way she manipulates background cosmic radiation, the energy given off by the Infinity Stones, but I don't want this to turn into like a 20 or 30 minute video. So Ajak and Icarus are aware that when the emergence is going to happen, it's going to destroy the entire planet. Like look at how big Ayrshin the Judge is orbiting the Earth when he's communicating with Ajak on this celestial zoom call. He's massive. He's like Galactus size. So even if the new celestial winds up being smaller, it bursts out of the Earth, it would destroy it completely. In over the past 7,000 years that they've been on Earth, the Eternals have grown to love humanity kind of like their own children, so they're freaking out about how to stop this from happening. But during this scene, Ajak is basically telling Icarus shit's about to go down. And effectively, it means that Thanos saved the Earth, the half of humanity that he didn't snap. Like, half is better than nothing, right? So Thanos saved the Avengers from the Celestials, not just the Celestial growing inside the planet, because that would have destroyed them when it burst out of the planet, but Thanos also saved the Avengers from Ayrshim the Judge and the rest of the Celestial Host. Because all the Celestials care about is the Emergence, hatching this new Celestial, creating more Celestials all over the universe doing similar Emergence-type plans on other worlds. They only care about humans and the other lesser life forms around the universe in so much as they're the cosmic food source that the new Celestials they're trying to create feed on. This will all sound familiar too when we get to Thor Love and Thunder and Gore the God Butcher's plan. Like you saw all the Thanos was right memes after Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. When we get to Thor Love and Thunder, you'll see a lot of Gore was right memes posting again. Gore goes around killing the gods of the Marvel Universe because he feels like they don't care about humans or the other people that serve them. It's kind of the same situation with the Celestials. It's like the Loki explainer, ants in boots. But if the Celestials are attempting to grow a new Celestial on a planet and something happens to kill it or doesn't go to plan the way they want it, the Celestial host will show up and just wipe the planet of all life and start over again on a different planet. We've actually already seen that happen. That's kind of what's going on during this classic Guardians of the Galaxy scene with Ys on the Searcher using the Power Stone. When the Collectors explain the history of the universe, the history of the Infinity Stones, he shows Ison the Searcher, a member of the Celestial Host, using the Infinity Stone to wipe the planet. Now, given the new context on the Celestial's true plan this whole time since they were created, it's implied that whichever Celestial they were trying to grow on this particular planet, something happened to it and it went off the rails, so they just wiped the experiment and started over again on another planet. I know a lot of you are also asking now, is this what happened to Thanos' home planet on Titan? Because it also got destroyed. I'll talk about that later in the video too. 
But even though Thanos is a legit psychopath confirmed, if you think about it, he really did save the Avengers and the planet from the Celestials for at least a little while until the Avengers time heist and Avengers Endgame the Hulk's Infinity Gauntlet snap brought everyone back. The reason why the blip jump started the emergence again is because the celestial growing inside the planet needs a certain amount of cosmic energy that it leeches off the sum total of humanity. Before Thanos' infinity gauntlet snap, there were a little over 7 billion humans on Earth. So had Thanos not snapped the infinity gauntlet, the emergence would have happened about 7 days after the ending of Avengers Infinity War. Like Infinity War would have ended with the same kind of downer ending except the giant celestial would have burst out of the planet, shattering it and killing everyone on Earth. So when he snaps the Infinity Gauntlet, half of the people on the planet vanished. It chopped the cosmic power supply line to this new celestial that was growing, delaying the emergence, as Ajax says. The way she talks about it, she makes it sound like the emergence would have taken a lot longer, like many years, but not delaying it indefinitely. Eventually, it still would have happened. It would have just taken a lot longer. But when the Hulk brought everyone back with the blip, it sort of reset the countdown timer back to what it used to be before Avengers Infinity War with seven days left. The Eternals movie jumps all over the timeline like ancient history to explain how the Eternals were created, but in present day, most of the Eternals movie takes place around the same time that Spider-Man Far From Home is happening. So the ending of the Eternals movie, when they're trying to stop this emergence, is happening around the same time Spider-Man is getting doxxed by Mysterio and J. Jonah Jameson in that Spider-Man post credit scene. And now if you think about it, Ajak and Icarus seem like they're kind of relieved on the DL that the snap happened without celebrating the loss. Like they're not complete psychopaths like Thanos, but they didn't want to see all of humanity completely destroyed. The whole idea is that they're just good soldiers in this celestial army marching to the beat of the drum. If all the relationships aren't clear between the Eternals, Ajak has been the leader of their group since they were created, so she's known about this secret celestial plan the whole time. They kind of get that across in the trailers that she's the only person, at least at the beginning of the movie, who can communicate with the Celestials and they would have had to let her know about this grand plan, the Emergence. So she's been deceiving the other Eternals this whole time. Even though she doesn't enjoy doing it, she genuinely does care about humans. It's just that she's still super old school, literally and metaphorically because they're so long lived. And at least it's implied that up to this point in history, she hasn't been willing to defy the will of Ershin the Judge. I know there's all kinds of side questions about why the Celestials need to grow more Celestials. If you're not familiar with the full backstory on the Celestials, there's this whole idea that the Celestials have been fighting a giant cosmic war since they were created with other Celestials, so they need to replenish their ranks, like Celestials have been killing other Celestials over time. Marvel's starting to do a lot more space-based, more cosmic movies, so we'll probably get into that in future Avengers movies. And what about Thanos' home planet of Titan? Was something similar happening there with the Emergence? Were the Celestials trying to orchestrate a similar plan, growing a new Celestial on Titan before it was destroyed? But the whole idea is that Thanos was born to an eternal family, and if the Celestials only send Eternals to planets where they're orchestrating Emergence-like plans, then at least in the MCU, wouldn't that have been the case on Titan? That's why his parents would have gone to the planet Titan. The way Thanos talks about it, Titan was destroyed less than 2,000 years ago, and there's no mention of another Celestial being created during that time. So I think it's implied the Celestials were trying to grow another new Celestial emergence style on Titan, and something happened to that, and the Celestials then showed up and basically destroyed the entire planet just to wipe the experiment and start over again somewhere else. In another early theory, at some point, Thanos learned about the emergence that it was going to happen, and that's what he was talking about when he said he tried to warn his people and they shunned him because he came up with his plan to stop the emergence by erasing half of all life. But he failed to stop it, his planet was destroyed, and that set him on his grand quest, his master plan, to balance life in the universe to stop the Celestial Host. That would give Thanos more of a John Wick style arc, like he's still not a hero, more of an anti-hero, but less evil than he comes across in the MCU so far. There's been talk about them doing more with the Thanos character, other versions of Thanos, like young Thanos in future MCU projects. This would actually be a good way of setting up a young Thanos arc in future Eternal sequels. When they start introducing the idea of the Eternals from other planets, like there are Eternals all over the universe like these ones that the Celestials just put on planets when they're trying to grow new Celestials. Like they could do a young Thanos arc in the flashbacks of future movies or even just a full-blown legit young Thanos movie or a young Thanos Disney Plus series. But because the Eternals movie is coming out tomorrow, my full Eternals post credit scene video will post Thursday night, then my Eternals full movie breakdown Easter eggs will probably post on Friday. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that, and be sure to go see the movie when you have a chance. 
Everyone click here for my Eternals Black Knight Kit Harrington video to learn all about his character and his future in the Avengers movies. And click here for my new Marvel Morbius trailer with Easter eggs for every Spider-Man movie ever. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.